Hello, this is Dave Gimberline at the University of Minnesota Shotokan Karate Club. This is March 22nd, and uh, the class is being recorded so that you can train later. Asynchronous training, as I like to say. Uh, so please train along. Line up! Switch. Switch. Switch me deep. Roll your foot. Drop your hip. Pumps up. Open your arms. Make your holding the giant ball. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Squeeze your fingers. Twist. Pull your right shoulder. 
That's a four layer front port. Sit down back up. Straight leg. Reach down. Put the same arm on the same side. Reach and exhale. Reach. Back. Reach further. Back. Reach. Back. Reach. Back. Reach. Back. And reach. Other hand. Reach. Back. Reach. Back. Reach. Back. Reach. Back. And reach. Switch. Away. Stretching deep. Roll your back foot, drop your hip, reach up. Open the arms, squeeze your shoulders together. Twist, slip over your left shoulder. Touch your head to the floor, follow your front foot. Take your leg, so with your left hand. Reach, exhale. Reach, 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 and reach. Switch your hand. Reach, 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 and reach. Two notch, straight one leg. Switch, 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 switch and drop down. Switch, 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 and switch. Rotate all the way over. Stretch the outside of your thigh, breathe deep.
Cycling through. So on the first action, on the first count, keep on the first action. On the second count, keep on the second action. On the third count, keep on the third action. Do that. Left arm out. One. Two. Three. One. Two. Three. One. Two. Three. Hey. Hey. Enough of that. 
strong hemorrhages. Say is nobody, there's no wrong way. 
And sometimes if you do something that you haven't done before, like, well, this is stupid, why would I do it this way? It's the dumbest thing in the world. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe there's something there that you never did before and you'll learn from it. So, okay, uh, left leg forward, fighting position. Front set kick, moving forward. One, one, we close. Two, three, four, five. Keep your knee up higher, like between your way hey, up here, and you're keeping your arm up here. Turn. Yep, let's front kick again. One, better. Two, three, four, five. Turn. Roundhouse kick. You wash your Try to keep your knee up. Turn sideways. And roundhouse kick sideways in front of you. One. Excellent. Push your front foot. Two. No. Back foot. For distance and timing for eventually for kumite, for, for sparring. 
So although it looks like I'm blocking, really, I'm moving out of the way and waiting for what happens next. Yeah, that's great, but this is the most important part. Two, three, I didn't have to block at all. Not really, not that I'm doing it right. So people get confused and think that it's a blocking drill. They spend a lot of time going one, two, and they're all, it's a, it's a mess. No time to know this. So you do three for the head, three for the body. That's the traditional drill. Do that for two tests. Then you switch over to one step. And a one step is left leg forward on the ball. He's attacking in one time. I have to learn to move. One, boom, boom. That's a vicious one, driving through vulnerable parts. To me, this is closer to self-defense and more useful. So I sort of think you should learn one step first and three steps later when you're actually trying to learn to move and spar and stuff. So if he was going to free spar as he moves to attack with whatever, I'm maintaining my distance and being ready to do my thing, whatever it might be. But it's mostly movement, not blocking. And that, people always get messed up with that. It's difficult because you can't work with each other right now, but hopefully relatively soon. So that's one part of partner work. The other part is pot application. And so pot application from Aeon Showdown. I have three parts that I care about. One is the rising block where he throws a punch, and I go one, two, that's my rising block right there. I think that's an extremely effective self-defense technique. You can use it the same day you learn it. It doesn't take timing, position, exactness, it just would work. And more than that, it's variable. I could push him backwards with it because that's what caught, I just want to get away from me and I can run. I can hit him and drop him. Boom! Get shot up into the side of his jaw, side of his neck. Very, very effective. That was one. The other one is uh, the knife hand blocks at the end. One, two, one, two. Those are, if somebody took a swing at you, you block it. That's your flinch, picking your hand up to protect yourself. Use the exact same strike for the counter along the side of his neck here. Similar concept to the riding block, except this one's a little bit more down riding block. So this movement, one, two, is one, two. Got that? The third and final one is the one they put in the paper, and that's this hammer fist strike. And the reason they put it in there is because mostly they were teaching kids when they developed this particular curriculum. So the guy grabs with his hand, he's pulling against the thumb, and then come back and attack on the bridge of the nose, possibly the top of the head, possibly the collarbone, someplace like that. So, you go here, right? So he might have a heck of a grip, and this opening is my safety spot to get out and come. That's like a, everybody used to teach that in self-defense. What is a problem is if he's so big that his thumb's going to go all the way around and that, I, I, that, that advantage isn't there anymore. It's very much a struggle. So then it would depend on uh, angle, like my elbow coming in, my hand coming out and hitting. But also, if you grab the other side, the same sequence works. Ooh. Ah, hang on tight. This doesn't work because he's bigger and stronger than me. This doesn't work because that's why he's holding onto my arm. The circle, whoa, whoa. It just is enough to confuse his muscle control, which a lot of circle, a lot of push-pull, a lot of stuff works that way. Jiu-Jitsu, Aikido, Karate, Karate Do. So anyway, that was me talking about the partner work that we're not going to do. But we can do hand shoulder. Huh? Giant two steps forward, giant two steps forward. Move over that way a little bit. Now, one more, you need a little more room between you and the wall. Yep. 
Hands are done. Boy. This is the end of your mom. One. Two. Do 
Nine snaps back to the center. One, two, one, two, nice and easy. Two nine pin blocks in the spear hand. One, two, and your front hand is going to cover, and this one comes over the top of your head. Three. Yep. Very good. Now the four nine pin blocks like the end of the game. Three. One, two, that one, two, 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 three, one, two, three, Oh, I 
So, uh, holding your own position, John mentioned this the other day, is it's, uh, it's mental and physical training, but it's mostly for lower belts. Who's a lower belt? Besides me. <laughs> so I, I went to a seminar with a very advanced belt, and he stopped. That's just for lower belts. So he didn't want us to have to stand there. Because basically that's learning concentration and strength. And hopefully after five or ten years you have concentration and strength. However, it's easy to get in the habit of being lazy. So every once in a while, if you want to test yourself, you go one, bam, and you stay there, you stay there, you stay there until somebody's done talking. Oh, my legs. Oh, no, you don't need to do that. Uh, it, it doesn't take very much to get the habit back or to bring your concentration back because it's 90% concentration, 10% strength. Unless you, you're an actual beginner and that just uh, strength you have to learn. Um, when Nishiyama was here, he wanted people that would listen, try, and then demonstrate good spirit and, and enthusiasm. So he would teach a concept about, about okay, in, out, you know, in, out, whatever his thing was. Now your own cup. And half the group would get up, do their own kata, and stand up and listen. I learned from other people that you should just start over. So I get to the end of my kata, pom pom, 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 stand up, go again, pom, pom. And he would start watching you and he would help you because it looked to him like, oh, this guy wants to learn. I'm going to help him. And, uh, Sometimes as Americans, our Westerners were the clue. What? Why are you helping that guy and not me? Because you're just standing there doing nothing. Um, but there were lots of little things. Like I told you, you know, my grandpa's supposed to move over there, you're like, okay. You were oh, like you want to be there, like you care. So all the little things happen. We're going to try one more time for your kata, then we'll take our five minute break. Do you remember about a day in the shape of a capital letter I? So try to remember that now and go the right way. Because every once in a while you didn't know which way to go. But it is way more confusing than everybody doing the other side. Out. Kata. Boy. Begin. So John Noel, you did a really good job. Uh, it's the, your, your start was great. Get to your X block, would you? Get this far. X block, yep. Uh, back up a little bit. Now do your next move. One. Your butt is out and your front foot might be turned. So make sure that it's better. Now you're leaning just a touch. Maybe straighter. Okay. Now on the side snaps, you have to make sure you coil and pick your knee up because you just pick your much better. Shoulder down. No, nope, that was not good. Go back. Do that one again. Pick your knee up a little bit better. Yep. So that's strange because that's not usually your problem. I don't know why it is that way today. And then go one. Yep. One. Two, 
three. That's better. When you did it before, you were twisted too much. Uh, twisted like, I mean, your, your butt was out. So that's pretty straight there. Thank you. All right, everybody, five minute break. Uh, hey, get some water. Come on back. Yes. All right, is it possible for everybody to get more line this way?
before I start pulling in that direction, that subtle. One, two, let's do it more. Three, keep your head up, one. Hold up for a second. Anyways, so you may have noticed when we got to the end, we turned and it counted. That's because too often people get in the habit of turning and they're done. What? And that might be your initiation. What? One, two. You have to go now. So there should just always be a ready, 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 ready. At the beginning, at the end, in the middle. It's just a little too convenient to stop at the turn point. So it could be my problem that you guys have to tell us to fix. But remind yourself that at any moment something can happen. So on this drill, this is the uh, problem, and nobody's doing very badly on this, but they're a little bit. So a lot of times, especially the groups that I haven't made do this before, there's a lot of shifting and shuffling. And nothing is smooth. Okay, so they adjust their foot, they wiggle their body, they clump down to the ground and then they punch, and then they can't move backwards, so they adjust their foot, wiggle, move. And we're gonna fix all of that by not putting your front heel down. So you're gonna go one and drive forward. Same drive, but that heel is up. You're gonna reach backwards with this foot, but not turn this one. Two, that's not right, but that's what I want you to do for right now. Three, so that you learn to be stable and steady and efficient. Eventually, you won't have to turn that foot. You should go back along the same line as you're supposed to. This is just a learning phase. So don't do it forever. Don't do it a lot. Just right now. Questions about what we're going to do? Left leg forward. You're going to step forward, pull down into your back leg, and leave that heel up. One. You're going to reach backwards with this foot and rotate your body. Two. Not your heel down. Three. Now you put it down. Stepping forward. One. Two. Three. So 
sometimes when I tell you or anybody that you want one, it's just as fun. So you should stay full. Fuck. Full. It, it doesn't do this part. So this part doesn't do this part. I know. Drives me insane, doesn't it? Sometimes I focus really fast, I also not my shoulder up. You totally can. <laughs> so, you're right. So, can you come up here for a second? And face that way. And with your, uh, do a step and lunge. Or, yep. So, she's saying, how can I possibly keep this here? Because she thinks if I tell her to pull her arm back more, it means her shoulder's going to do that. But no, this goes forward, and this goes forward, this pulls, and between them, that's good, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter, you can feel? It, it squeezes. There's a limit, but you're super flexible. Most people can't do that. Just pull, 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 oh, not a problem. John King, there's a limit to how far his hand can go. And it's not bad, all down the shoulder goes. It's strong. So, good job, good question. But you can do it, right? There is a, uh, a battle in cry, and I'm trying to think of a good example here. When you're trying to learn to use your body, you want it to be loose and free and tight enough that it's under control without it restricting your motion so you can't move. You can move. So you have to keep your spine straight and tall, you have to keep your core, and then the rest of you is uh, connected. Fuck, 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 fuck. That's not, that's too much, it's not as good. This is too much. I can't possibly put my hand back into my shoulder. You can, relax the muscles. Looks like. So especially while I'm learning, it often helps to move without trying. And then when you get there, be strong. Because if you try on the way, everything gets bound up. Just move, move. And then squeeze it in. But I gotta say, every individual has their own challenge when they're trying to figure it out. So, some people are too tight all the time. That's my problem all the time. Then they tell me to relax, 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 and then you all the time. And then they tell me to tighten up again. Oh, what are you talking about? Just like you. I don't get it. I can't possibly pull this back. Oh, yes, you can. It's just what you have to maintain to be able to move. Trying to think of another good example like that. So I like uh, the 10 block. I want my elbow to move past my center. So I don't want my body to change to do it. Because that kind of wrecks the whole thing. If I can keep this straight and tall and pull it, it gets kind of rubbery. It's like, oh, that's fun. But you get too tight. It's very frustrating. So I get your frustration. And I enjoy it. Here we go. I'm going to do it again. Left leg forward. So now you're going to step forward. Your left arm and left hip stay there when you pull. On. Then you drive backwards and twist. Here we go. And you keep that there. 80. Step one. Here.
and faith. So for Kumi Bay, it's extremely useful. For self-defense, it's extremely useful. And where in self-defense, where this comes into play, is that usually you're not going to defend yourself on a gym floor. You might be outside, curved, you might have gravel or stone or things in the way. Or if it's slippery, if you go whoop, your whole strategy of how to move is kind of screwed. So this should be in such that you can move without losing your balance, even if the surface is not great. So some kata emphasizes this more. Chuan uh, Jin, pressure when you go. Huang uh, Yats, oh, that pressure. Different than usually people do. Uh, they just land on the leg for a run day. But eventually they'll be very, very cool. So I'll step into my front stance and I'll still have control. I don't have to touch my heel when you sit. I might, but you don't have to. So uh, it helps on uneven surfaces, slippery surfaces. Not a guarantee though, you have to be careful in practice. But it should give you uh, more effectiveness, more options than. That works, but it's just like the first of coin well. It's the, the crudest, simplest, easiest thing to do. Find your foot, hit the guy. That works, but there's more. Oh, enough of that, sometimes it doesn't look the same. Anyway, here we go. Two counts, left leg forward. First count, step in front. Hi. Two, three. Hi. their weakness. So this guy over here had a habit where he loved to where you me over here. I'm trying to think I did this to a guy. Uh, this guy was a brute and uh, he had no trouble hitting you. He didn't care. I, I care. <laughs> and he was very scared because he would hurt you. And um, I studied how he moved, and one thing about him is he did not have patience. So as he was moving around trying to hit me, I stayed too far away for him to hit me, and that drove him nuts, <laughs> right? So after about a minute and a half, he couldn't take it anymore. And what I saw him do over and over again was this wind up where he just tried to drill it. So after I let him chase me, and I could feel it like simmering, Oh, I'm gonna nail this guy. And he outranked me by a lot. <laughs> and so he came forward with his head, and I went, Boom! I got a point for it. It was so cool. So 
but that was not the end of the match. I had to fight him down more. That was really scary. I had two two incidences like that where I scored on somebody and then I was so proud of me. And then I realized, oh crap, what did I do that? <laughs> and uh, one match I won and one match I hit the ground and uh, did not win. And so, uh, but I gotta say on the time that I got hit, I knew what their plan was. It was totally a lack of confidence on my part. So with the first guy, I thought I was still in the game, right? I never really let it go, and I scored on him again. The second guy, I thought I was gonna die. He's gonna hit me, he's gonna hit me, I knew it. He's gonna hit me, he's gonna hit me, and I was gonna hit me, and I was gonna <laughs> So I mean, it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. And looking back, if I had played the patience game again, stayed away from him, switch my feet a little bit, get out of there, I would have won, I was up by half a point. But I didn't learn strategy until much later. Maybe that was, so I learned strategy slowly. Uh, <laughs> there was another thing I, I, I tell people sometimes. There's a guy, uh, can you down this one for a second? Uh, there was a very famous fighter who used to come out to fight like this. And he wanted people to punch or kick him. So every time they did, he'd go, woo! And they knew that. Because it's not like the first time. People won tournament after tournament after tournament for years. But they couldn't help it. This was a wide open target. So we move around, try to draw, boom! You know, I saw that. And I thought, that's brilliant. I'm going to try that. <laughs> so we get out of the tournament, I pick my arm up, whoa! Oh, oh, oh. Crack my grip. And I did not learn from that time. I tried it again in a different tournament. Crack my room again. So it turns out some stuff you have to practice ahead of time. <laughs> and uh, and some stuff is not for you. Right? Somebody else might be great at it. I gave it up. Well, it's not my thing. So being tricky and leaving a target, not my thing. Staying covered, don't let them hit you. That's my thing. <laughs> so anyway, left leg forward, fight in position. Front snap kick moving forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, turn. Watch here, round up kick. One, two, three,
again, most of you have been through this a little bit before, and if not, you probably figured it out. It is a mistake to go one, two, three. First of all, don't ever hold your breath. That's just a terrible thing. Don't try so hard. Part of the goal here is to get yourself in a nice, smooth, operating position. Then do it again. Then do it again. It should be simple. Don't make it too complicated. We're going to skip right to the start where you land without your feet. So you're not going to go with one. You're going to go one and the other foot can place that foot there. So you're going to do it again. Oh, reach back. Three. Four. Don't just quit. Yo. Left leg forward. Find position. Front snap kick. Line up your heel up. One, two, three, better. Keep thinking that you won't be too good. One, two, three, that much better. One, two, three. On all of your kicks, pretty close. A little bit better with your body. One, recoil, two, recoil, three, recoil, uh, one, two, three. Your auto sticks are going too far sideways, so you have to kind of stay the heck over there. That's the part of the One, two, three. So I didn't mention this last time. But it's still a thing. This foot, it's going to pivot a little bit so that I can kick it like that. When I step backwards, though, I don't want you to do this because everybody is so dead in their leg. Whatever position this man is up in, even bend your foot out, kick and reach back. This is still set. Then you're going to do your round once kick. It might go to a little more because that's the way rounds kicked are. That's fine. But I just don't want you in the transition. Keep flopping your foot around, so we you get a stale, stable base for the start of it. So, I said, whatever position this is in, leave it there for this part. Sideways, bend, out, and then kick. Here you go. Front kick, we can go up. One, two, three. One, oh, two, three, one. You drag this foot a lot before you kick. Pick it up sooner if you can. Two, three, one. But it's not a guarantee. So some of you used to go like this. And if I tell you to leave your heel up and you still go, I didn't learn my right. you just got tough ankles. You haven't learned to move the center. So when this is here, this should become light, light, light. So when you kick, you kick, and when it's light, but I'm still forward. Kick can reach. Kick. Your foot is light. Make a friend thing. Your feet are light and quick. Try to remember this. Your feet are light and quick. Aren't they? Light and quick. Here we go. Left leg is not designed. <coughs> front snap kick. Light and quick. One and two. Reach. Three. Too much weight going backwards. One, reach with your center. 
to back up two steps and so forth. It's a little bit. Oh. All right, we're going to rotate in a fancy way here. When it comes time to rotate, you're going to hold the down. Down to move here, you're going to move there, you're going to move there. When you're done back there, that's what we'll do. Does that make sense? We'll get it. Out. Hands are up. Hands up. Boy. Don't be back. One. Two. One, two, three. Here goes. One, one, three, right now. Just do it more, 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 more. Two, three. Here goes. One, two, three. Two, one, two, one, one. Two, three. One. That's it. Two. Nice. One. Eel. Look straight ahead. High up. Look straight ahead. Look, look, look. High rest. Okay, here's my grip rotation plan. You go back there. You go over there. I was going to put you in the back. And you. Is that not a good system? <laughs> yes. Out. Hands are up. Yeah. Right. One, two, one, two, three. One. More. Too much hand in your wrist. One. Two, three. Nice. Go over down. One. Two. Go over down. Two. Your favorite. One. Two. One. One. Two, three. One. Two. One, two, yep, that's just to you. Out, rotate. I know it feels like you should go up here, doesn't it? You don't though, go on. But if you did come up here, you, the front person up here, would have to go down. Everyone rotate. Okay. You talk to me, I don't know. Yeah, I go to X. Yeah, shoot. Sure. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go back to back one more. I know. But if instead, if instead <laughs> you went up here, I don't know how that person hurt. Right. Hands are done. Out. Stop.
huh? And so that, I know, it feels like you should be coming up with it. I don't know why it's not working. And so that, what? What? Two.